Oh, hold on, work. hold on. Let me take a sip. Yay, Friday. Friday. We have an absolute shit show going on here in the studio, and I'm glad you can't see it. My husband actually turned on the camera it's this just morning. over there. And I was like, um, if people actually saw that, <laughs> they'd be like, okay, you two need some hoarding help. We're just in transition here. <laughs> yeah, well, yesterday I got a surprise that one of our J1s was here. And I was like, oh, okay. We, yeah, when were they supposed to get here? Not until after midnight tonight was the first one. Got it. And then next week we were, I was expecting the rest of them. So how many? How many? Four. Wow. Right. So just putting together a set of bunk beds yesterday for my Kia is divorceable. I bet. <laughs> but it was just me and, and my new marketing director, which I don't know if she's going to make it. She was like having panic attacks. <laughs> I'm like, just go to lunch. Like, That's I don't funny. even, never mind. <laughs> I put it together. I put parts of it wrong that I had to, I'm watching like the YouTube videos on how to put it together. So many screws. So many screws. <laughs> well, it's Ikea. What else did you expect? I know, but it's put together. It's perfect. It fits in the room. Lovely. And now I have to do it again. <laughs> that's funny. It's really Is there bad. anything worse than putting furniture together? I don't think so. I think that that's really a test. I'm of... trying to think of the last time I put furniture together. A couple of years ago, I was like living, moving in, whatever. And um, I mostly just sat on the floor and drank wine and let them do it. Right. So, uh, which I feel like is like I excel my, right, at that too. my rightful place. Like you just hold the manual and be like, did you do this part? Yeah. You're, you're doing over there. Sip, sip, sip. On your own, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> right. Right. Um, I know that from sitting here looking at my wine glass. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm the director of activities when it comes <laughs> to stuff like that. So I'm definitely, that is not where I exceed or excel. It is not for me. No. Um, yeah. You know, but here we are. But here we are. <laughs> is you're gonna have a very full house? Yeah, it is. It's gonna be fine once everything gets squared away and everything gets organized. But right now, it's total chaos. It is mayhem. Yeah, there. it's mm -hmm. giving me a little anxiety. I know. So. Well, yeah. Welcome to my life, full it's of anxiety. <laughs> People everywhere, beds everywhere, mm -hmm. piles everywhere. Um, Yay, summer! It was beautiful yesterday. Yeah, it's been really nice. I and then I was leaving this morning, and I have on my little sweatsuit, and I walked outside, and I was like, "Oh, it's still beautiful." Right. It's just, <laughs> and I have to go to work today, but I didn't work yesterday. It was really nice. I sat around. I finished my book and started a new one. We're on so far nine books of the year. Okay. Wow. Good for you. Not bad, right? I'm on nine books of the year. Okay. None zero. And I figured, you know. I I am reading a series and I'm most of the way through the series, so I feel confident to add it to our content rack. Okay, good. So we can discuss it a little later. All right, perfect. Yeah. All right, so are we ready? Oh, I'm sunburned. Uh, oh, okay. But not like I'm in pain sunburned. Just like I have to be Irish before I become Italian. <laughs> so the annoying thing about- I don't feel I, like that that's a thing. No, I swear. <laughs> so like I came out, Um, I was sitting in my grandparents' house and- I'm talking to my grandmother and I'm like all I was like all I could feel it yesterday leaving like oh I'm crispy I gotta get out of the sun so I get out of the sun and I come in and I look like a tomato and I have like you bet your bottom dollar the worst kinds of unflattering tan lines yeah. all, all over the places and I was like okay but like this will I'm, I'm hoping this will fade eventually well I woke up this morning and I'm like a beautiful tan goddess everywhere but my bum oh my bum is still a tomato well, uh, <laughs> like clearly, you can't deal with that. No. So, <laughs> of all the places. So, I apologize for my meltdown. <sighs> As you can see, it's getting a little difficult around here. <laughs> the divorce is still on. <laughs> okay. We can move on from my sunburned bum. Fine. He just went to bed last night. Like, Total and utter chaos went to bed. I'm like, oh, I, we're I, we're in the venting. I'll, I'll cook dinner. I'll cook dinner. That that's fine. I'll 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 do 400 loads of laundry. That's fine. I'll I'll make sure it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Um, dumpster fire behind me. Actually, it's in front of me today. So <laughs> <laughs> just letting you go off. Like, uh huh. Yep. I'm sure every other person that is dealing with the moving situation, a seasonal thing, you're leaving your college dorm. Yeah. Maybe you've got other things going on in your life where you've been in that transitional flux. 
you in your house. You have to change houses because you got kicked out of your year-round rental. That right? That's a good one. It happens. Yeah. It really does. College kids coming home, throwing an absolute wrench in your everyday, day-to-day. That That's feels like the worst. Right Can you imagine being like happy and alone and then your kid comes home? Right? <laughs> And then you're like, oh, I'm so happy to see you. And then they're not really quite old enough to make mature decisions. So you're worrying about them, except there's the dichotomy of that and of being alone all the time doing their own thing in college. And you're like, how do I feel fine when it's a Wednesday afternoon? And I just assume you're studying. But now that you're in my home on a Wednesday afternoon and I can see the degenerate that you are, now I'm stressed. And also every day they ask for money. Every day. (laughs) Every day. I don't even spend money every day. They spend money every day. Every day. And they work. Yeah, why aren't they using their own money? I I, I really haven't grasped that yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, please don't. You're like, really, stop. you know. I'm good. Thank God I don't have any dates or anything this weekend because I'd be feeling like real unmotivated to go like meet well, somebody, like, start a life with somebody, enjoy this. This kind of giggles. I don't know why I need it. Oh, well, I was supposed to go away this weekend. I was supposed to be on the vineyard Again. with my family. Um, like the ones that I chose, this was mm. the Christmas gift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like my dad, his wife, my aunt Gail, her husband. We have a place on the vineyard we were staying at. I asked if we could just push it to September just yeah. because everything is psychotic right now. Yeah. And uh, we had a death in the family. So it's kind of like changed our time. Yeah. And yeah. financial status. So that's kind of put a damper in things. So now I find myself with this free weekend that I'm going to fill up with shit I need to do. Like, uh, yeah, but you get know a what? dumpster. I know, but on, oh, we don't have an episode on Monday. But on Wednesday when I see you, it'll be like, I got everything done. Yeah. Okay. It it will be fine next week. It'll be great. I know. I just have to suffer the growing pains right now. And I'm not loving the growing pains. Should we get into what's roasting? Yes, please. Except me. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. All right. I guess the, st- the saga continues. The saga continues. This is my favorite thing about pop culture, honestly. And like one of the major reasons I love this podcast is because we start a story and then the we're digging. like, we don't really know what's going on. And then this, it all starts. Well, the headline out. hits and then you find out what's real, what's not real. I don't even know if this is real. I don't even know if this is real. There's like a media control. Like he said, she said, and we all sit there like. So <laughs> Al Pacino. I love it. Just broke the news on our last podcast. He's going to be a dad again, 82 years old. With Nor Al Fala. I think it's how you pronounce the name. Alfala. Either way, there's a lot. Her name is Nor, though. I know that. Unpack. So, go back. Al Pacino has kids already. 33-year-old and two 22-year-old twins. Mm-hmm. Anton and Olivia. Cute names. Yep. Um, I guess it has come out that Nor was a friend of Olivia's. Yeah, awkward. And they were hanging around during the pandemic. Can you imagine... No, that this person is in your pandemic pod and all of a sudden your dad's boning her. There's an issue. Well, there's so I have so many questions like one during the pandemic or before the pandemic. If Olivia's 22 now, that would have made her 18, 19, bringing around a friend that was in her mid 20s, which like there's such a development difference there. And I'm not saying like if you're 18, 19, you can't have friends that are 24, 25, but like. Having a friend that's 24, 25 and hanging around the house a lot. I just feel like this was definitely a target. You know what I mean? Like, like Noir Pacino- was like, okay. Oh, uh, maybe. This is a target. I'm going to start hanging out with the daughter. And that way I get in with the dad. And that way I get my little anchor Ooh, baby. Oh, interesting. Because there's information out there that she she said that she couldn't get pregnant. That she said yeah. she... I mean, there's... and And... All of this is going on where the side story is they're fine. This is all media drummed up. They're yeah. actually together. But then on other ones, it's like they've been trying to separate this. They're not together. The lawyers are He's- involved. It's all legally complicated. The kids are upset. Everybody's been working on this for months. They're not together. She knew that he didn't want to have kids, which is why she didn't tell him until she was 11 weeks along. Which, honestly, though, that's not that far. Like, you find out. Yeah. You even if you find it like you could find out late and then there's actually not that many weeks before you're like, okay, now I decided I'm gonna go through this. Now I have to deal with this. Now I'm gonna tell the father. So eleven weeks to me doesn't seem like, oh my god, she waited forever. But at the same time, like I with the laws and everything that's going on, I don't even know what you're allowed to wait for when you're not reset, allowed. right. I don't even depends know depends on where you are. Right? We can't keep track of it. But I just think the whole thing is interesting. Like she came over to hang out with Olivia and then she started sleeping with Olivia's dad, who happens to be Al Pacino. 
and now she's pregnant. Right. But like pr- prior to pandemic, so call it 2019 to t- 2003, we're four years later. So what are you doing four years later still sleeping with Al Pacino? It's just very interesting. I don't I don't know. They have no relationship and it's a mess. I do. I think it's weird that it says that she told him that she couldn't get pregnant because she has a thyroid issue. And also uh that yeah. that didn't just manifest itself out of nowhere. Or maybe somebody just made that fact up. I it's just a really weird you thing. You think she just made it up to like get in bed with him? I think so. Oh. I don't if know. That I don't feel like the truth. I don't feel like Al Pacino, if you're 82 and a 29 year old wants to sleep with you, like, or not even if this point you're 80 and right. she's 27, call it. You know, I'm just being, I'm just guessing. About so yours. he's about to have his 83rd birthday. And then, uh, well, even Pacino, uh, Robert De Niro reacted saying, oh, he's a few years older than me. God bless him. <laughs> I was like, ew. I just mean, like, if you're 80, I get, like, I, maybe it's because you're Al Pacino and you're famous, but, like, I feel like if, if you are in a situation where it's getting hot and heavy with a 25-year-old as an 80-year-old man, is, like, I don't want her to get pregnant and yeah. having conversations about how I don't want kids, like, the forefront of your mind. Either way, um, the reports now are that Al Pacino and the girlfriend are together despite rumors of breakup. Who knows know. what it is? I feel like the source is it, with the commentary that it's all a mess. It's right. a pretty good quote. Yeah. And that's a little more believable than like, everything's great. Everything's We're so great. happy. We're so happy. I meant to have a baby at 83. Ugh. Good luck to you all. Not our mess. <laughs> <laughs> not my circus, not my monkeys. Exactly. Judging all of that circus from over here. Yep, exactly. For sure. Perfect. <laughs> um, all right, some little music news. Billy Joel, crazy. 10 years, 150 concerts. He's ending his record breaking residency. He's tired. I don't blame him. I wouldn't, I don't want to do, I would not want to do that every single night all I just the time. I can't believe like, a residency in New York. Right. 10 years, 150 concerts. Wow. The final 10 concerts will take place on October 20th. And then that's that. That's that. Or is it going to be like um, a Yellow Brick Road share thing where it's like, I'm not done. I'm not done yet. I'm not dead yet. I, I don't know. I'm just. It's just like impressive how these men just keep going. Yeah. In general. Well, I just heard that Paul Simon is not going to tour anymore just because he can't hear anymore. That's got to be so not, frustrating. For sure. I'm also not shocked. I'm like, that just makes me sad. But you got McCartney out there going strong. He'll be 105. That man will is die the, on stage. Is it the generation about these men? So I was, my grandfather's 91. He's going to be 92. Yeah. This July. Um, He comes home. He gets picked up from work at four o'clock. I feel like if you don't like, is it a generational thing? If you don't use it, you lose it. And I feel like they just want to do something. It's yeah. it what is what keeps you going. Yeah. I mean, Cliff's grandfather retired and he was dead like within a year Crazy. just because he stopped doing what he was doing. No other fashion other than he had no reason to live, really. That's crazy. So, I mean, I guess there's Hobbies, a purpose driven situation. But I mean, when you go to that level of but it's, notoriety, and... I don't know. It's just so interesting when you compare to like the Gen Z mindset. And I'm generalizing and maybe our Gen Z listeners will hate me, but there is a sense of like they take work life balance into such heavy consideration in everything they do. Yeah. And it's, it's become, you know, a meme and a generalization, or whatever that like Gen Z doesn't want to work. And of course, I think that there are a lot of kids that do want to work, but it's true. They're like working for more money. They're working for more benefits. They're changing companies based on culture. They're picking jobs based on like sustainability practices. Like they're being much choosier about where they're working. And they're also not into this grind culture mm-hmm. at all. Right. But however, you have a generation of people, boomers and et cetera, that are did nothing but grind. Yeah, we're workaholics. And I'm not a boomer. But they have these. There's so many of them that have these super, super long lives and are continuing to be yeah. successful and have kids at 79, 80. And it's all the same generation. Yeah. And I'm not saying one thing's right or the other. I'm just saying it's so interesting to see those those two. Like, I wonder what Gen Z's life expectancy will be like. Right. When they Curious. Have, when they have this mentality even going into work life. Yeah. 
Like, I don't in their have early to do this. 20s. I don't that, have to be there. Right. I don't want to. But does that mean they're going to spend their time and their energy into more hobbies and things like that? I don't know. I'm just interested to see, you know, I mean, I'll be dead, but like <laughs> what the like evolution is. Who is right? Yeah. <laughs> Where do we go from here? Like, I'm not saying the boomers are right in their workaholic ways. And I'm not saying Gen Z is right in their like picky, fancy, choosy when I'm going to work and when I'm not going to work, right. work from home generation. I am just saying that I think there is a. From like a sociological yeah. standpoint, where is it going to fetter out? Yeah. We're curious. With with the concept of like, if you keep working and you keep going and you have a purpose, then Interesting. you're more likely to have a longer life. So he's still working. You got Springsteen out there on the European leg of his tour. And my most favorite moment of this was somebody was FaceTiming their dog during the show, during the song Born to Run. And I'm going <laughs> to add the photo in right here. And I was just having this moment where I thought, have I ever done anything ridiculous like that? Where I felt the need to FaceTime somebody, let alone my dog, let alone someone watching my dog to get my dog on the phone to FaceTime the dog. Yes. I was thinking that too. Like somebody had to pick up the phone. Right. And like then you be like, had a dog this sitter. This is your friend. But the dog looks like it's so like, Oh, that's what he looks like. <laughs> oh. Like the dog is intently watching this FaceTime. And it made me laugh. This is a generational difference. It reminded me <laughs> last summer we went to see Lake Street Dive. Yep. And we were, I don't know, fourth row, but there was somebody sitting in like the second row of this concert yeah. in the middle of it playing solitaire. Yeah. Actually, like, I took a photo pay, of that. Not paying any attention. And just, we were like, this is a big deal, man. What, what are you doing? What? Okay. Clearly, you didn't want to be here. Like, season ticket holders. But I'll just I go started, to the show. Then I started to get into it. And I'm like, are they winning though? <laughs> The weirdest stuff you've ever seen at a concert. If you want, I'm going to attach that as our uh, question with our podcast and you can answer it. I always like, uh, you know, listener feedback is, are you out there first off? Secondly, are you listening? Somebody's going to be like, Tori at the Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> what, did, be... what was the weirdest thing you saw? I was dressed pretty weird for sure. I saw no I... photos. That's because nobody, those are not going to, same thing with like how much I pay on tickets. We'll not see the light today. Why? I'm just screaming in every video. We've talked about that. I this. just want to see also, an outfit. I don't even have a good one of, don't have the good. Well, that's trash. If I you're going to dress up for something. I was literally like, I didn't even get one good photo for Instagram. So did I even go to the concert? Right. And actually that's totally questionable because I have the Taylor Swift amnesia and I don't even remember it. <laughs> <laughs> There's this phenomenon going on where. Pa apparently people that went to the Taylor Swift concert don't actually remember the Taylor Swift concert. And I am so one of those people. Thank God I have videos and stuff. And my friend and I have videos. But because there are full sections of the concert that I just right over my head. Well, I'm going to have to have your friend send me one of those videos so I can see what you're wearing. It's a full psychological concept where like your endorphins and your everything's running so high that it actually prevents you from um, like firing memory neurons. Isn't that crazy? Interesting. So bizarre. What have you done at a show? What have you seen at a show? It's it's concert season, baby. What's happening for you? Yeah, it's true. Just curious. All right. So more music news. This is kind of cute, but super interesting. Camila Cabello and Sean Mendez have like not directly confirmed to the media, but then they just started talking about their relationship. Like they're moving in together again. I'm uh, so she's 26, he's 24. They've been broken up for two years. And now they're back together and they're the happiest they've ever been. They're the strongest they've ever been. They travel together. They're doing, they have their own places, but they're doing everything together. Apparently all the feelings have come flooding back. I don't think the feelings ever went away. I think no. she saw something, i.e. another person that she was interested in. No, 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 no. I think he was going through something. Remember when he can't, was canceling? He was devastated over their breakup. I know, but I think he was having struggles before that. And she was like, you got to go deal with this on your own. And whether he dealt with it fully and he built, I mean, he had to have, right? Because he canceled concerts. He did his thing. He came back, came back a little bit stronger and then was like, okay, I'm good. Can we get back together now? But I don't know. At 24, like, it sounds like it's a very much so like a first love thing. I think it's so hard not to go back to that first love situation i got married cliff and i got married at 23 crazy. for the second time crazy <laughs> that was my second you people marriage are crazy <laughs> okay we don't do that anymore i know well it's not like it was that long ago i mean i still feel like when you imprint years. or meet the person that you love or are going to be with 
you're just with them. It I don't know. I think, I think this isn't going to last. I think this is back to like you went back to your ex. bad habits. Yeah, I think this is you went back to your ex. I think it was this person was so significant in your life and your development. It's very hard to detach. And I know it's been two years, but things happen in those two years. You're still not that old. You still you have had incredible experiences, but you haven't necessarily like built your brain up enough and had enough life under your belt to so you're calling for it not to last. I don't think it'll last. I think this is, I, I think we'll see what happens again in another two years. I and just I'm think thinking this is a cyclical, the one. I think it's a cyclical thing. Oh, possibly. It could be exactly they that. They don't like leaving each other's sides. All right. Maybe this is codependency. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank All you. right. <laughs> Which like you usually are when you're in your early twenties in your first relationship. And then when you miss them in your second relationship and you're trying to like figure it out what to do. And if that bridge is still there, then cross it back over and see what happens. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's easy to fall back into a level of codependency. Possibly. Okay. All right. We can move on. Yep. Ryan Gosling, 42. <laughs> Gen Z critics who think the actor is too old to play Ken in Greta Gerwig's Barbie movie. It's coming out. Barbie is now thrust back into the collector's items yep. where people are like digging out their Barbies. Some are worth up to $27,000. I love it. Uh, but I 100% was critical when I saw some of the early photos last year. Yeah, we talked about this. You're like, we, we talked about it in an earlier pod. Aged. Ken doesn't have crow's feet. <laughs> And I, I've got plenty okay. of them. I've got enough for However, everybody. I've earned these laugh lines however, at 45. We, that being said, though, there are multiple Kens in this movie. There are multiple Barbies and there's multiple Kens. We didn't okay. know that. I didn't know that. We didn't know that then. So he is the, like, pinnacle Ken, which, against Margot Robbie, kind of a great cast. I think I love it. Right. A year and late, I love her. And I also like the fact that, like, apparent, there's different Kens. You know? So if you don't like that Ken, pick another Ken. Okay. But I liked what he said. Okay. Do you want me to read it? Yes, absolutely. The quote is great. So he, I don't know, I'm assuming he went out on Instagram where he was, no, he was talking to GQ about all of the critics on who commenting on how old he is. And he said, it's funny, this kind of clutching your pearls idea, like hashtag not my Ken. Like you ever thought about Ken before this? <laughs> and everyone was fine with that. For him to have a job, that is nothing. But suddenly it's like, no, we've cared about Ken this whole time. No, you didn't. You never did. You never cared. Barbie never fucked with Ken. That's the point. If you ever really cared about Ken, you would know that nobody cared about Ken. So your hypocrisy is exposed. And that's why this story must be told. The I last, love Ryan The last Gosling. line is like such an actor moment. I but I think it's so funny. Like you, his job is the beach. Right. Or his job is surf or something. Like he, You he, are an accessory. You are Barbie's <laughs> accessory. <laughs> Like a purse, like the shoes, like, the like shoes. an outfit. You are an accessory to yeah. Barbie. That's what Ken was. She's got her dream house, and then Ken goes in the dream house. Right. Like this, And I like the fact that he pointed it out. Like, why are you trying to make Ken more than what Ken is? And if you understood Ken, you would know that Ken is nothing. Right. So why are you commenting on how old I am when Ken is irrelevant anyway? Exactly. The story's not about me. Exactly. You're like, I love that. I just love him. I love yeah. that him and um his wife are out of the limelight they're raising their kids quietly yeah you never see him out and about he lives a very regular life i was just reading an article recently about how he had come out and said maybe in the same article and gq that he knew he didn't want to have kids and then he was on he was working with her eva mendez right yeah working with her on set in their movie and he was like but i'll have kids with her and i was like oh stop it's not like what everyone right wants. And they do. They live so out of the limelight. And yeah. I love that they just have a regular simple life. And he's so just salt of the earth, down to earth yeah. human being a Mickey Mouse kid. What's that Grow movie with Emma growing Stone? Growing up and... with uh, yeah. Brittany and Justin and all the drama and BS yeah. and Christina. And he was part of that. Yeah. And just kind of was like, not not for me, though. I'm older now. I survived it. He was like that then, though. It was yeah. never for him. That drama was not what he was about. Yeah. So just, cute. Just funny. I just like the fact that he was like, you guys. La La Land. Is that what you're talking yes. about? No, with no, 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 no. Um, Steve Carell. Oh. So it's a comedy. Yes. They do the scene in the house. And then it finds out that, like, he's the the... Oh, what is that movie? Steve Carell, Emma Stone, Ryan Gosling, a rom-com. Uh, 
where he's the Steve Carell is newly divorced. Yes. And he meets Ryan Gosling in a bar. And Crazy Ryan stupid love. They, so funny. That's it probably is one, one of my favorite. Yeah, that's I have up like there. A, a few top ten. That's a good content wreck. It's supposed to rain this weekend. So if you're uh, stuck yeah. in the house and bored, see if you can find Crazy Stupid Love because it is a good one. It's a good one. Mm -hmm. I agree. Scene when they're with Emma Stone when they're in the house. Okay, it's since fun. we're talking about, you know, aging <laughs> and being on this space. Tori started playing the T-Pain song and then I realized it was the new ad for Wendy, Wendy's <laughs> and I was like, oh, what? What? You know your old one. I got sucked into this story and then I clicked play and I just turned to you and I was like, I can't turn it off. It's been 16 years since T-Pain came out with Buy You a Drink. Seriously. And now the singer wants you to buy something a little bit sweeter. <laughs> Wendy's Frosty. Oh, How much did Wendy's God. have to pay for this? Probably I, not much. Was, I, I don't know. I bet you they. I bet you because he hasn't gotten off the couch at all. I bet no. you he's like, I got money. I got investments. I don't need to do anything. It has to be a fat check for yep. Wendy's to get to use his most iconic track, like a, most well known, most relevant. To Although people. you know, tag team was the first one to kind of do that with the scoop. There it is. Whoop! There it is. True. And now we're now we're starting to see these these older like what song can we dredge up and bring back and br breathe some life into this I fun meet that, campaign. I want to meet that marketing team. They're smart. Whoever so you are funny. are super smart. I love what you're doing. Some run uh the strawberry frosty mm -hmm. had a limited run in 2022 and it's back and it's back in a big way with the by reprising the popular bop buy you a drink yep. turns into buy you a frosty. It is great. He cuts out of like a pink car. Frosty pain. Yeah, it's funny. So bad. It's like a Jeopardy. Category I just wonder if he was sitting before in the... and after. <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder if he was sitting in the boardroom like that's a great idea, or like, are you kidding me? Yeah, right. He's like, how much is it? <laughs> like, how much am I getting? I don't know. Just tell me to show up. That's just get, it. Write me a check and I'll show up. A hundred percent. Um, I love this new TikTok trend on Fridays. TikTok trend on Fridays. Here we are. TikTok trends on Fridays. Before and... we get into content, Max. Yeah. This one I thought was kind of cute. I wonder why. Our ballerina over here has decided that it is now the TikTok trends that yeah. we are talking about. I did not decide it was the TikTok trend. 68 million views on TikTok decided it was the TikTok trend. Okay. I'm loving that adults are taking dance classes, period. I think it's great. There's um, Country Line Dance has mm. made a huge resurgence here on the Cape. Really? And there are Where? four or five different bars now that have I didn't Country know Line that. Dancing. Um, the Axe Bar in Hyannis now is doing country line dancing lessons. That's cool. So I watch if those you want to learn how to do it. I watch those videos all the time. It does not look hard. Yeah. No, it's it's really not I'm like, that I can hard. Do, I can do that. Four square paddle. I got it. I got it. Yeah. I want to do that. And there's like maybe six or seven moves within the move. Yeah. But I love that this is a resurgence for adults doing their, their little dance classes mm -hmm. or going out to go dancing. I miss that. It's a way to work yeah. out, tap into your creative side. Yeah, they're talking specifically in the TikTok trend with 68 million about adult ballet, which is just making me, I'm, I'm now having dreams about it. Like, <laughs> do you want to take a class, Ray? Do you want, like, I have like a craving to, if any of my past ballet friends have, are listening, I have a craving to like take bar. Like I, I have a craving to like just stand at the stand Well, they have the bar, bar classes. And, yeah, but it's, I mean, like go through, not like bar, like Your workout positions. bar. I mean, like ballet bar, like that, like meditative state and that progression. Get it done. I'll do it with you. It'll be like Fantasia for me, but I'm in there. <laughs> I'm on it. Ballet core <laughs> is like a thing. I'm like, I took eight work? years of ballet. I'll, I'll really? do it. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. I didn't know that. It was a fat ballerina. Absolutely. <laughs> I was in there. So was I. Tap, <laughs> jazz, ballet. I was in it. <laughs> I did it all. So many dance classes. I loved it. Tap too. Yeah. Yep. I can do the Charleston time I'm just, change. I'm just like looking at you like this is a whole new thing. Oh, I've got all my it. costumes in the other room. Tarantella ballet. From oh, what, yeah. From how? Okay, go back. You When you were little. Like until I was like almost 20. Oh, my God. I did not know this. <laughs> I loved it. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have TikTok. We didn't have it. I had dance class. I loved it. That's awesome. <laughs> I absolutely loved it. That's why I do the dance marathon every year. I get to watch all the dance uh, studios from yeah. across the Cape come and perform. I, know. I should come. I <laughs> absolutely love it. It's like the best of all recitals. 
Yeah, because it it's like it's the, everyone bringing their A game and it's all together at once. Yeah, it's cool. Like I totally love it. It's, it's a really way for fun. them to like workshop and have their costumes seen again. Yeah, get professional photos taken, build up everybody's like excitement about it. And they're like from teeny tiny to adult dancers. We have the belly dancers. They're Crazy. adult belly dancers on Cape Cod. I it's found true Mirage. Recently, I found pictures of me in some of my costumes when I was like five and six. I love I it. Like, Adam and oh Chatham does God. ballroom dancing. We have a huge dance community here on the Cape. That's true. Whatever we do. kind actually, of dance. That's actually true. We do. We do you have a lot get of options into. in a lot of studios. I'm like a little bit removed out of it because I'm hashtag super retired. But I, we, it's good for your mental health, man. Yeah. If you like to dance and just relax. And, but and there is a sense of work I'm, out. I'm totally afraid to step into the studio, too, because the expectation I put on myself and I assume that people will put on me, too, because it was such a big thing for me, because yeah. I was a professional, because I did it, that, you know, even like choreography wise, like if somebody was like, oh, like, do you ever want to choreograph some time? And I'm like, oh, my God, it's in it's five, six years. So what? Dust off the cobwebs and get in there. Uh, my shoes. I did pull out an old leotard to wear to the Taylor Swift concert. So Excellent. I found them all in the shockingly it fit. It zipped. It See, tucked. there you go. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So I did bust out an old leotard for one of the Provincetown carnivals. Yeah, it's a good time. <laughs> <laughs> did go right out oh, my ass, but it start- definitely fit. But we're starting Pride Week. Yeah. Aren't we? Isn't there all kinds of stuff going on this weekend up in P-Town? There's always stuff going Pride on in month. P-Town. You know, every single week there's a new themed week. Yeah, I was going to say it's Pride Month, but it really just like kicks off P-Town summer because mm-hmm. then there's events the entire month. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Provincetown Film Festival is coming up. Oh, Billy Porter's coming back, so I'll be able to hang out with him, cool. which I love. And uh, we've got press passes, so I'll definitely be hanging out, seeing what's going on, what's new and fun. Okay. I know. I'll report back to you. Content recommendations. Oh, what yeah. you got for me? You got nothing? Uh, Succession is coming back, and I'm really excited for it. I thought it was over. I suffered through the first five. Like I, I worked for this show, track of this show. Just because it was so not positive, angry, cutthroat, everybody bothering yeah. each other. It's very well written. I'm ready for the season finale, the final season, just to wrap it all up. I thought it was done, so uh, it's not out yet. I'm got waiting. It. Ted Lasso finished. I saw everybody crying. On uh, I didn't media. finish it. I have three episodes. I'm savoring the end of Brad Ted and Lasso. I are watching it together, and he and I are in the middle of the season, so we're behind. But I'm sure we'll sub. I will. I By the way, Brad's though. dad. Just yeah, in case you're sorry. wondering. It They're wasn't just... like Tori's got a boyfriend and she just casually threw it in there. No, no, no. no that's, that's dad. No, but if I had a boyfriend, that's totally how I do it. I know. Just that's kidding. why I was like, it took me a minute. I was like, did she just talk about a boyfriend? No, wait, no, 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 no. That's my dad. I got it. <laughs> um, Content those are just What are you reading? Terms. Oh, shoot. Because I need a book. I have not read. I finished okay, like two I don't or three. really think this is your thing. I'm opening up my Goodreads so that I get the author right. Um, is it historical fiction? No. Okay. It's fantasy smut. Oh, I'm not against it. It's what my husband reads. Your husband reads fantasy, fantasy smut. S- he reads sex books. Mm, well, they're like sci-fi oh, sex smut. Oh, 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 oh! They actually there is like a total genre for that for guys. Yeah. Um, like the like mystery cop detective. He choose on books. an island, and then they're always like some weird like descriptive. Uh, probably are like spaceships and aliens, but men. there are definitely I mean, like women. sex scenes in there. Yeah, I'm, I'm just laughed at him. I was like, that's that's what gets you. <laughs> I'm not dressing up like a fucking alien, just so you know. <laughs> just so you know, that's we're not, not adding happening. that one in. No, we're not. Um, so it's called the Play to Prisoner series. The first one is called Guild. Um, it's actually on Amazon's like Kindle subscription. So I've been reading these all for free, which is great because they're Otherwise, they're like 10 bucks a pop or 10 bucks yeah. a pop. Raven Kennedy is the author. So I am an idiot. We'll preface this by saying I. So it's like a five book series right now. I'm in the fourth. She said it. I did. No, 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 totally. So the whole concept of this is there's this girl who's a prisoner and she can turn things to gold. I'm just going to say it. She okay. Can. Um, and she is held captive by a king. Who wants to use her power. And then there's this whole story of her evolution as a prisoner and her awakening and her past and whatever and all this stuff, right? And then, you know, other kings get into the mix and that's where the spicy scenes come in and all all of more magic and blah, 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 all the things. But it took me halfway through the second book to realize that this is a take on a fairy tale. 
King Midas with the gold mm-hmm. touch. I, so his name is literally King Midas. And it did not occur to me that this was like a, a fun take on a classic story. Right. I had no idea. Halfway through this, halfway through the second book, I was six hundred pages like, this in. This seems so familiar. I love it. I was just like, "That's a cool name. Why do I know that name? This is an interesting concept. I kind of like. I feel like I know about Tori. Like Brothers Grimm, Hans just, Christian Andersen. Yes, classic. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I'm an idiot, but it's pretty good. The it's a lot of like slow burn. People love that if um if you're into smut books. So it's very slow, slow burn from the first two books. Actually, it opens up real hardcore. And then it's a slow burn totally for the characters up until pretty much 60% of the way through book three. And then there are some like back-to-back scenes that had me like. All right, then. Halfway through book three. Um, I don't recommend reading them and then going on a date afterwards because that was a lot. Oh. That was a lot for me. All right, then. I was like, I couldn't just stop thinking about it. And he's trying to ask me questions. And like, all I could think of was the book. It was a lot. Interesting. <laughs> it was a lot for me. Um, but yeah, it's pretty good. That made me laugh in the cosplay situation. Because I, I was talking about Amy Schumer's got a new special oh, yeah. coming up on Netflix. Looking forward to it. She, Comes out June 13th. Unpopular but she, opinion. Cliff hates her. I don't like her. I like her because she's gross and gruff. And she just kind of says it like it is. And she doesn't bother me. My husband also can't stand her. I don't know what about her I don't like. I don't know. What she said, though, made me laugh because she said how awkward it is now that she has a family. And Oh, I like, saw this clip. Having this moment with her husband. And she's like, yeah, you know, we try the, the role play situation, but it's like, I'm I'm in a coma. <laughs> and so it made funny. me laugh because yeah. I was like, all right, I, I can get down with she's that. Talking, yeah, she's talking about how um, when you're married, you've been married for a while after you have kids having... Um, spicing Inter- it up intermarital relations changes from like a guy you like to like but now you're my family right now you can't talk weird. dirty to him it's weird <laughs> i get it is that how it goes not not for us no you guys. we're fine we have a healthy sex life so long. when i don't want to kill him so there's that that's true you mention it more <laughs> often you talk about your sex life with you more often or with more detail than i really want at all i'm i'm fine with it i mean really that's I feel as if why we've been married Listen, for 20 years. We still have that. I'm I'm glad one of us is getting some. <laughs> it's on a regular. All right. We're ending the podcast right there. We're That's done. A- <laughs> we're done. I don't even like, it's like We're not going to punish our bodies even when we're fighting. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't believe I have a minute on my podcast. So I'm not getting laid. We got to go. Welcome. Get perky with us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Sorry, except for this family. Monday. Sorry, family. Bye. First shot morning show. Bye bye now. Tori's gonna. Oh yeah, socials. Fa- <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. First shot morning show. Okay, bye. Now I gotta go. The first shot morning show is produced by Lemonadio. When life gives you lemons, make radio. We encourage everyone to listen happier.com.